Hi, Gina. Thank you for joining Hello. me today. Thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to speaking with you about First One In. Um, but before we start, could you please introduce yourself for those who are tuning in today? Sure. Um, my name is Gina O'Brien, and I wrote and directed First One In. Excellent. Thank you. So I wish I, I had more to say about myself, but... That's plenty. That's plenty. Thank you. Um, so I don't want to give too much away about the film sure. because the plot is really great and really funny. Um, so um, maybe let's just start with um, just talking about the idea of how you decided to make this comedy based in this tennis sort of world um, in, um, in the U.S. Sure. Uh, you know, the uh, playing tennis in a clinic every week and then um, in, in leagues with other women, it's rife with comedic um, elements that just lent itself to a screenplay. And um, it, it was so much fun to write because when I was taking notes and whatnot, I was looking at everything a little bit differently. Um, but it really, it's, it's a part of my life and, you know, write what you know. So that's really where it came from. That's so great. Um, I really um, like how you show us different sides of this world because we have sort of the, you know, the clinics, as you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. that are open to everyone and uh, also this sort of more elite world as well and sort of right, the right. interplay of these um, games that take place in the league. So it does create yeah. a lot of tension, but fun too. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm really... Um, quite impressed with your cast, um, men and women. Um, did you, um, were you involved with the casting of the film? Oh yeah, yes. Um, it, our casting director, Christine Cromer, I've worked with her in the past. She's, she's incredible. She's, um, you know, I've, I approached her with, again, a long laundry list of, um, you know, characters. I, I think we have 33 characters in this, mm -hmm. you know, low budget indie film. So it's quite a challenge for her, but um, she did a great job. We, um, you know, we went through, I guess, maybe four days of um, casting sessions. And then I had a couple of ideas that I brought to her um, that she was able to find these people and and she got them and one of them is jeff hiller and the other mm -hmm. is Catherine mudant i um i searched the ucb the uh you know united citizens brigade because i wanted to find um of course i wanted actors but i really wanted to find funny people improv actors um which I guess every actor now is doing improv, but uh, I just there were these two people that really stood out and uh, it, we, we looked at their videos and we approached them and we got them and they were great. They were really great. Jeff was so great. We used him in four roles. You know, I don't know if you noticed that. Did you notice that right away? Or? No, not right away. I think I actually had to maybe, you know, kind of do a double take or right, right. pause and come back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think He's it's wonderful hysterical. when an actor can, can work within the same film and just fulfill different roles that way. I think it's neat. Oh, uh, yeah. It was, it was really fun um, also working with, uh, you know, these improv comedians or improv actors because, uh, you know, they elevate your material to a whole other level, which, mm -hmm. you know, it's fantastic. Really was uh, a, a great experience. That's awesome. Um, I'm curious about how you um, work with the cast, um, you know, uh -huh. mainly your two leads, because, you know, we have uh, right. Maddie and Bobby, um, played by, um, who do we have, Kat Foster and Georgia King. Uh -huh. So, you know, I know you had your script and mm -hmm. um, what you hoped you were going to get. Were there instances where you kind of maybe went off script with, with the leads and what was that like? Oh, sure. Um, you know, 
uh, like many uh, small indie films, um, you know, we had such a tight shooting schedule. This mm -hmm. was taking place in 23 days and, you know, none of the cast really played tennis. So <laughs> <laughs> there was definitely a learning curve there. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Kat and Georgia, man, what pros. They just knew. They, they knew who their characters were. And we sat uh, for a bit and we spoke about, um, you know, their, their relationship with each other, um, their relationship with other characters. And um, I just, you know, they were, they were both really great. My one thing that I wish I had more time to do was spend um, additional time with uh, the other actors because, right. you know, I, I feel like, mm -hmm. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but I feel like I just didn't use them to the fullest that I could have. Um, but our days were, you know, it was bam, 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 done. <laughs> go home, right. you know, get up two hours later and go do it again. Um, we prepared as much as possible, but the casting again, um, because we'd had such a large cast, we didn't have enough time to really uh, spend with all all of the actors. Right. So it was it was quick. And that's understandable, but I think it's you yeah. know um, there you have such a great ensemble cast anyway that I think everybody brought something really great oh, in each of the roles. Um, yeah. I I think I enjoyed every performance um i know i'm partial to the ladies in the clinic because they're sort of <laughs> you know they are sort of the spice girls right like they have a nice mix of energy and personalities and you yeah. know can you talk it's, about that those characters specifically i'm really oh my gosh i mean that set was so much fun <laughs> you know <laughs> catherine karina anish emmy the four of them they were like um they were just fun and right. whenever they whenever they got together it was really uh they played off of each other they mm -hmm. genuinely liked each other and just got along so well so that you know of course made my job very easy but uh but also uh just it was great to be around you know the the cast enjoyed um whenever everybody was on set together uh, trying to hit tennis balls, right. uh, you know, uh, they really were a lot of fun. And it was like Catherine was the leader of the gang there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a good time. I can almost see that actually, yeah. um, you know, and I think the reason I appreciated the cast is not just the diversity of the cast members, but I also uh, liked their camaraderie and their yeah. true to nature aspect of those relationships, you know? Yes, it was so true. Yeah. And um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about your, um, I don't think it was maybe the, the thing that you maybe wanted to do, but I really appreciated your um, attention to the friendships among women. Um, you, you know, in terms of the clinic, as I mentioned, but also with um, Maddie and Ollie, because, you know, we often kind of see this film start off as comedies and then become romantic comedies somewhere along the way. And I kind of, I appreciate it that, you know, we got to see and got, and got to know these women um, in sort of a, a different environment. Oh my God, Heidi, I love you for saying that. Thank you. <laughs> I actually planned that. <laughs> you did? No, I really did. I didn't. It, it would have been, um, and I know some people were disappointed it didn't maybe fall into a romantic comedy and it would have been so easy to do, but uh, I really wanted it to be about, about the women. Right. No, know, no, no. I'm not disappointed. <laughs> no, okay, great. No, and I actually think it's refreshing too because, you know, it's not the usual setup. Um, I, I, you know, tennis, I don't know that world very well, but, you know, I just wanted to go on this sort of fun trip with these women and see what happened. And there's a lot of mishaps and a lot of, you know, um, mean girls as well. Right. But um, right. I did appreciate the comedic aspect of it, but there's, there's a nice um, human element to it as well, which I think sometimes yeah. miss in other it's, films. What 
I mean, I can name two of those, um, which is good because I'm the director, but, <laughs> but um, you know, there's a moment with uh, Catherine where, well, she played Jane, um, where, you know, she's, she has um, a, a back and forth with Josh, uh, yeah. Fernando, mm -hmm. and that, you know, we were going back and forth. We're like, does this bring everybody down or is this, um, is this something we should keep and cherish? And I'm so glad that we, we kept that moment. Um, yeah. uh, you know, it just, it works so well. And it, it actually, I think we cried, Catherine and I were <laughs> around the same age and we kind of cried after that scene. Uh, and then another moment was with uh, Kat, who is um, not outside of herself, the, the beginning of the film, mm -hmm. but the moment she gets into the car with her best friend, yes. it's almost like you can feel her release and she's just, she's letting it go and she's herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a moment I really liked too. Yeah, I mean, those are two of my favorite moments too. I mean, with, uh, with, um, where Maddie and Ollie are in the car with their, you know, with their burgers and, right, right, right. you know, like those are very genuine moments that any of us relate to. But I, I do appreciate the moment you mentioned first with Catherine or yeah, Catherine Kirk. Yeah. because we don't often talk about these things or, or we do, but sometimes it's brushed over in terms of, you know, um, right, right. Um, of age and, and women um, aging. So I appreciate those moments as well. Great, thank you. Um, no, thank you and the cast. <laughs> Thanks. You know, I I know you mentioned you had a pretty tight schedule with filming and I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure post production was also pretty fast. Um, are, were there yeah. any scenes in particular that you wish had made it into the film that ended up not being part of it? Um, no, you know, we had, as I mentioned, nobody played tennis. Um, right. Our editor, Chuck Dybeck, I mean, he made magic happen because, mm -hmm. um, you know, most of the time we were shooting from one side of the court um, with a pro on that side, and then okay. we turn around and shoot the other side, sometimes on different days. Right. Um, so that did, it took a long time to do that. Um, and as far as scenes that didn't make it in, no, I think, um, I think there are some scenes I would like to have cut further, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's a different thing. Right. Um, but I think we set out to make this movie and we did it. You know, I think, I think mm -hmm. it's, um, it's just the way I would have, you know, wanted it to come out. And of course, we had, you know, to deal with the pandemic in the mm. midst of post-production, which stopped us for a bit, but then we learned how to work remotely and, um, and we got there. Yeah, no, I think it's great. And it's also kind of nice um, to have these other, you know, films available to us now as well, because, you know, we all need some of these um, yeah. in our current circumstances. Um, I'm mindful of time, but I also have a question about the music. I really... I really like the music in the film. Oh, good. Um, good. Were you, did you have any idea about the music or how did that come about? Oh, yeah. I was on the music constantly. My editor and I had so much fun with the music, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, a music supervisor and uh, Jonathan Feingold and, and our producer, Paul Jarrett, uh, they didn't have as much fun as we did because <laughs> it was really, it was impossible to clear a lot of the music and it was very expensive. So, you know, we, we did some fancy footwork and we got there, but um, it was great to have a couple of young hip hop artists in there um, and did, plus the two cellos, um, oh, yeah. you know, so we, we actually surprised ourselves and we came out with a really great, um, a great, it, the music was great, but we also have, um, at the end of the film, we use uh, the Bryan brothers. And I know you're, you don't, uh, don't know tennis too well, but they're mm -hmm. two uh, championship doubles players. Mm -hmm. um, and they just they just retired before the U.S. Open, but they are in a band, and we use their three songs towards towards the end. So if you 
if you actually stay with the credits to the very end, you'll see their picture. In there. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. It kind of brings yeah. it full circle. <laughs> yeah, it was weird how it all felt, you know, fell right. together. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's a little bittersweet because this is a movie that I think I would like to have seen in a theater with a whole bunch of people laughing with me. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still uh, really looking forward to seeing it with friends. Um, oh, great. Whether it's in person or virtual. But um, so the film drops on Amazon soon. Mm -hmm. um, what are the um, handles for the film so that we can follow on social media for updates? Sure. Um, Mitch, are you still there? Yep. It's um, at Wait. first one in film on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and then first one in film.com for the website. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Gina, I am so appreciative of your time and you. your answers. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, more updates from this film um, through social media. So. <laughs> One day I will be social media savvy. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Thank you. We'll do the work for you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for your time, Heidi. All right. Thank you.